Some new evidence is coming to light about Natalia Barnett, a sociopath and psychopath that has displayed violent tendencies toward her adoptive parents, who's believed to be an adult masquerading as a child. This evidence I'm about to tell you, to me, without a doubt, proves that Natalia is an adult and was an adult when she was abandoned by the Barnetts. I'm gonna serve you this update right now on IO. Welcome back to Inform Overload. We do the news, we spill the tea, and we tell you about the spiciest news updates on the internet. I'm Charlotte Dobre, and I wanna know are you guys sick of hearing about this real life orphan story? Too bad. It's honestly one of the most interesting stories I've ever come across. So subscribe so we get to hang out every day and make sure you follow the IO team on social media. We got Twitter, we got Instagram, and if you hear about a story that you think would be great for IO, send us a DM and if we choose your story, we will shout you out on our channel. We're also trying something a little bit different on this channel from now on, so stick around until the end of the video for a surprise. Surprise. All right, before I get into it, I will say that I'm not gonna spend too much time reviewing what we've already talked about. We've made like four videos already telling you about Natalia's backstory, so make sure you check those out to get up to speed. What I'm about to tell you proves Natalia Barnett is not a child. So we know the Barnett family set Natalia up with an apartment when they moved to Waterloo so their prodigy son Jacob could study physics. Before they left, they legally changed her birth year to 1989 and enrolled her in a state-run home through a program called Aspire Indiana. Natalia ended up being evicted from this program. So then the Barnetts rented her an apartment in Lafayette, Indiana. Christine alleges that she paid Natalia's rent for a year and set her up with Medicaid, disability aid, social security, and food stamps. But then there was this three year gap where no one knew what happened to Natalia or how she was able to fend for herself while she was on her own and not under the care of a guardian. Now we know where Natalia was during this time period. She was taking adult classes and working on her GED, as in her high school diploma. Why would a child try and get her high school diploma? Well, either she's a prodigy or she's not a child. We know this because Natalia enrolled at the Lafayette Adult Resource Academy. That's when she met her next door neighbor, Margaret, who describes her as a very chatty person. She said, I quote, she loved to talk. She could be shy at first, but once she got going, she had something to say about everything. This educational institution does not allow anybody to take classes. In order to go there, students must take a placement test that determines where they're at in subjects like English, math, history, and science. Students have to demonstrate they're at least at junior high level of knowledge. And if they don't possess that, they work with a tutor to get their grade level up. Lafayette Adult Resource Academy teacher Meg Foley told Insider, this is adult education. We cannot have anyone under the age of 16. Anyone under 18 must be enrolled by a parent and have written release from the school they came from. Margaret Axum said that she didn't think it was fair for the Barnetts to leave Natalia on her own, but she doesn't believe Natalia was a child. She said, I'm not sure how old she was, but she had to be at least 18. She didn't seem worldly enough to be 30 now. I think it must be something in between. Margaret and Natalia attended classes together and they also talked when they saw each other around the neighborhood. They would also meet up with people at a drug and alcohol recovery house in their neighborhood. So this wasn't because Natalia had a drug or alcohol problem. She was just lonely and wanted people to talk to according to Margaret. Then in 2016, Natalia vanished. No one at the school knew where she went. Margaret Axum then learned that she was evicted from her apartment and a few days before she met with the police who wanted to put her somewhere safe. Natalia popped up again in April of 2016 because she had new guardians, Antoine and Cynthia Manns. They believed she was 12 years old at the time. This was when they asked the Tippecanoe County Family Court if they could become her legal guardians. They asked a judge to change her legal birth date back to 2003. But that's when Michael Barnett came back into the picture and went to the Marion County Court hearing with his attorney. He provided a letter from his doctor maintaining that Natalia was an adult. It was this letter that forced the judge to reject the man's plea to change her birth year back to 2003. And her birth certificate continued to state that she was born in 1989. The case was dismissed. Okay, so as if things aren't interesting enough, listen to this. I have tea, I have more tea, tea. So remember in a previous video, I talked about how it was weird that Natalia's Ukrainian birth certificate was like odd because her birth date was 9-4-3, indicating September 4th, 2003, but there were only three digits. Usually a birth certificate has six digits. September 4th, 2003 would be 09-04-03, right? So apparently the Ukraine has a history of falsifying birth certificates and that's according to other adoptive parents who've had similar experiences adopting children from the Ukraine. One of those adoptive parents is Kim Thompson, another Indiana parent who also adopted a child from the Ukraine. She said, I will say that Ukraine is above all else corrupt and birth certificates were completely fabricated.
frustrated. Her adoptive son once told her how kids figured out their ages in the orphanages. Okay, listen to this, okay, listen. Kids would base their age compared to the height of other kids. If one kid was certain he was 10, a taller kid would be 11 and a shorter kid would be nine. Are you kidding me right now? And that's why Natalia was given the birth certificate that she was because she was shorter than everyone else. I can't, I can't right now, I can't. Oh, but wait, there's more, okay. There's a reason why Natalia has displayed violent behavior toward the Barnetts, and this is where it gets kind of sad. It's likely that Natalia had experienced a great deal of trauma in her life. Indiana behavior scientist John Swinehart said, I quote, it's somewhat common for children with severe trauma to do things such as smear bodily fluids, become aggressive towards animals or people, or act in an angry or oppositional manner. The world is unpredictable to adoptive children, so they must act in unpredictable ways to deal with it. This is all pretty unfortunate, and clearly Natalia has had a very hard life which has sparked the person she is today. But was it the responsibility of the Barnetts to deal with her violent behavior and continue caring for her? Well, it depends what the courts say. Christine and Michael Barnett are being charged with two counts of neglect of a child or dependent. The problem with this case is in the state of Indiana, a neglect statute defines a dependent as a person of any age who has a mental or physical disability. Because of Natalia's mental and physical health, it might not make a difference if she was or wasn't a child when the Barnetts left her in Indiana and moved to Canada. They abandoned someone who was legally their dependent. The Barnetts faced trial in January of 2020 and if they're convicted, they could face up to five years in prison each and fines of $10,000. Well, this is a pickle. I really feel for the Barnetts, Christine especially, who's lost her job over this lawsuit. And if you guys are interested, a GoFundMe page has been set up to help cover her legal and living expenses. I'm gonna leave that down below in the comments and the description of this video for you guys in case you're interested in contributing. For now, I'm gonna quickly wrap up this one with some comment features from my video, How Old Is Natalia Barnett? Al Cochino said, if I pretend to be a child, will you adopt me, Charlotte? I can make you breakfast and stuff. If I look older, it's because I got that Benjamin Button disease, I swear. Uh, yeah, that's a hard no. I can't even keep plants alive. I will for sure be charged with neglect. <laughs> Lisa Love said, my son dated your doppelganger and watching you makes me miss her so much. It's always a bummer when you break up with somebody but you really like their parents. It's like, but can I still be friends with your mom? <laughs> Mommy Peep, I said, the number of IO vids on this is almost as crazy as the story itself. Mad bro. All right, that's it for me. Stick around for a little surprise at the end of this video. If you haven't already, leave a like. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for me. See you next time. A sociopath and violent psychopath. Right, that's I got my water. Did you just Naruto run past me? That, I think you need to do that again. That was pretty sad. Can you try again? My water's here. Like if you're gonna do a if you're gonna do a Naruto run, at least do it properly. I'm like run into the table. There you go. <laughs> Much better. <laughs>